Hello everybody! If you're wondering why the lighting is different, it's because it's raining outside because I live in a state where it rains all the time, otherwise known as Orlando, Florida. I'm really really excited because my friend Tam um, went and sent me all three books of the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, so I literally, I do not have to spend money to buy this book. You have no idea how freaking excited I am right now. You don't have to read it. This is great. I'm gonna read it for you. So you don't have to spend money to buy this book because I didn't need to spend money to buy this book. So here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm not ready. I'm not ready at all. Chapter two. My heart is pounding. The elevator arrives on the first floor and I scramble out as soon as the doors slide open. Stumbling once, but fortunately not sprawling on the immaculate seat of the floor. You're complaining about being clumsy again, really? Come on. No man has ever affected me the way Christian Grey has and I cannot fathom why. It is his looks, his civility, wealth, power. I'm sorry, I will I will get through this. I may need some alcohol, but I will get through this. I do understand my irrational reaction. What do you mean irrational? You just said he has good looks, he's polite, he's wealthy, and he's powerful. That's a pretty rational reaction. Because he's rich. That that's normal. That's not irrational at all. My heart steadies to its regular rhythm and I can breathe normally again. I head for the car. Again with the reading your vital signs off of a monitor. This is this is terrible. Damn, Catherine Kavanaugh. It's like a refrain. Damn this, damn that. I check the speedometer. I'm driving more cautiously than I would on any other occasion. And I know it's a- I know it's a memory of two penetrating gray eyes gazing at me and a stern voice telling me to drive carefully. This is really disturbing. She's like- she's subconsciously obeying him. But they only met today. This is shaping up to be an extremely unhealthy relationship. I'm just saying. I switch on the mp3 player. I turn the volume up loud. Sit back, listen to thumping indie rock- <laughs> Thumping indie rock music as I press down on the accelerator. As I hit the iPhone 5, I realize I can drive as fast as I want. Good for you! And I'm not the property of a man I only met today! And congratulations, Anastasia. Uh, Anna, thank you so much for doing this. I owe you, I know. How was it? What was he like? Oh no, here we go. The Catherine Cavanaugh Inquisition. Wait, why is this such a big deal? She asked you to do the interview for her. It's like everything is really over-dramatized in the book. And Twilight did the same thing. They over everything. I frowned at her. Don't you look so innocent? Why did you be biography? He made me feel like an idiot for skipping a basic research. Kate clamps a hand to her mouth. <gasps> Jeez, Anna, I'm sorry. I didn't think. Kate, now you're an idiot. I liked you, Kate. I can't. Mostly he was courteous, formal, slightly stuffy, like he's old before our time. He doesn't talk like a man of 20-something. How old is he anyway? 27. Jeez, Anna, I'm sorry. I should have briefed you, but I was in a panic. Kate, you're a freaking moron. You're you're as flighty as she is. How did the two of you even live together? Do you forget to turn off the hot water too when you're washing the dishes and it just kind of pours out on the floor? How do you even function as a human being? Later, I've worked at Clayton since I was started at WSU. It's the largest independent hardware store. Are you freaking kidding me? Hard she works at a hardware store. Bella Swan. <laughs> I remember the guy, Mike Newtface or whatever, she, she worked at his parents' department store in Forks. This is Twilight with the names taken out. She didn't change anything. I don't know what I was expecting, but this was certainly not it. This level of laziness. And this book outsold Harry Potter! Much more of a curl up with the book in a comfy chair by the fire kind of girl. That's a lot of hyphens. Curl up with the book in a comfy chair by the fire. That is all hyphened. That is like the worst sentence I've ever seen. My eyes are bleeding behind my eyes. Got some good stuff here, Anna. Well done. I can't believe you didn't take him up on his offer to show you around. He obviously wanted to spend more time with you. I realize I'm biting my lip and I hope Kate is- How do you realize you're biting your lip? Hmm, what's that? Oh, I'm biting my lip! It was embarrassing. I'm glad I never have to lay eyes on him again. Oh, it can't have been that bad. He sounds quite taken with you. Does it matter if you're never going to see him again? I'm assuming that- in like three paragraphs, we're gonna see freaking Christian Grey at Clayton's, but I'm just assuming. I mean, I don't know. I call my mom in Georgia. <laughs> Probably Southern Georgia, I'm assuming, because Bella Swan's mom lived in Jacksonville. She proceeds to tell me about her latest venture into candle making. My mother's all about new business ventures. She's bored and wants me to occupy her time, but she has the attention span of a goldfish. Oh my god. She worries me. I hope she had not mortgage the house to finance this latest scheme. I hope that Bob, her relatively new but much older husband, is keeping an eye on her now that I'm no longer there. He seems a lot more grounded than husband number three. That is Renee Swan. That is literally the characterization of Renee Swan from the Twilight series, Bella Swan's mother. I can't. I can't read this. I can't. Mom, I'm fine. How's Bob? 
as ever, distraction is the best policy. It sounds like her mother is a three-year-old. Then she goes, I'm like something shiny. And the mom goes, oh, where? I call Ray, my stepdad. Mom's husband number two, the man I consider my father. Are you... It's Charlie Swan! Listen to this! The man whose name I bear. It's a brief conversation. In fact, it's not so much a conversation as a one-sided series of grunts in response to my gentle coaxing. Ray is not a talker, but he's still alive. He's still watching talk on TV, going bowling, fly fishing, or making furniture when he's not. Ray is a skilled carpenter, and the reason I know the difference between a hawk and a hand saw. It's Charlie Swan! Why? Friday night, Kate and I are debating what to do with our evening. Standing on the doorstep is my good friend, Jose, clutching a bottle of champagne. Jose, great to see you. <laughs> and Jose is the first person I met when I arrived at WSU, looking lost as lonely as I did. We recognized a kindred spirit in each of us that day, and we've been friends ever since. Not only do we share a sense of humor, we discovered that both Ray and Jose Senior were in the same army together. Our fathers are firm friends, too. Jacob Black! Oh god. But his real passion photography. Jose has a great eye for a good picture. I have news. His gallery is going to exhibit my photos. That's amazing. Congratulations. Wait, don't go, Jose. <laughs> I can't read that name without saying it in a, in a terrible, probably racist accent. Jose and I are good friends, but I know you've done inside he'd like to be more. He's cute and funny, but he's just not for me. He's more like a brother I never had. Is I can't. I can't. Me. Perhaps I spent too long in the company of my literary romantic heroes, and consequently my ideals and expectations are far too high. <laughs> I watch Jose open the bottle of champagne. He's tall and in his jeans and t-shirt. He's all shoulders and muscles, tan skin, dark hair, and burning dark eyes. Why am I doing this to myself? Saturday at the store is a night. Then for some reason I glance up and find myself... I was right. I was right. I called that. I called that. By myself, walked to the bullet gray gaze of Christian Gray, who's standing at the counter staring at me intently. Heart failure. I freaking called that. You have it on tape. I called that. This is a terrible book because I can predict what's going on. What the hell is he doing here? Oh, look at all hair and outdoorsy in this. No, tousled hair and outdoors in his cream trucky knit sweater, jeans, and waggy boots. I don't know. What the hell are you doing describing him in exactly one sentence ending with a question mark? I think my mouth has popped open and I can't locate my brain or my voice. You think your mouth has popped open. You think it popped open. It might be still shut, but since you apparently lack nerve endings in your lips, you don't know whether you're like this or like this. Also, you can't locate your brain. Your brain, I'm pretty sure, is in your head. I'm pretty sure it's not like in your stomach or in your butt. I was in the area. This is my way of explanation. I need to stock up on a few things. It's a pleasure to see you, Miss Steele. His voice is his, his voice is warm and husky, like dark melted chocolate cut fudge caramel or something. Or something. It could be warm and husky like a bear's, but we're just gonna go with dark melted chocolate fudge caramel with no commas at all or hyphens because that's just not a freaking proper sentence. Oh. My memories of Dim did not do him justice. That is like a direct quote from Twilight. I swear to God that Bella said something like that in New Moon. I swear. He's not merely good looking. He's the epitome of male beauty. Breathtaking. And he's here. Here in Clayton's hardware store. Go figure. He's amazingly hot. Go figure. What can I help you with, Mr. Gray? He smiles. And again, it's like privy to some big secret. It is so disconcerting. There are a few items I need. To start with, I'd like some cable ties. He remembers his gray eyes clearly use cable ties. Oh my god, the only reason I would not be convinced he's a serial killer by this point is if he didn't buy, like, other disturbing items. Buying cable ties? I'm pretty sure he's a serial killer. I really hope I'm wrong, but maybe I don't hope I'm wrong. I don't know. What could be the alternative? I don't know. I don't know. Let's keep reading. We stock various lengths. Shall I show you? I mutter. Wait, what? I try for nonchalance as I come from behind the counter, but really I'm concentrating hard on not falling over my own feet. I'm glad I decided to wear my best jeans this morning. What does that mean? Yeah, like in the fabric? Do they make your butt look good? Do they like, are they comfortable? Why are you glad you decided to wear your best jeans this morning? After you, you remember gesturing with his long fingered, beautifully manicured hand. After you. <laughs> with my heart almost strangling me because my throat tried to escape from my mouth. She get that checked out. I was visiting the WSU farming division. It's based in Vancouver. I'm funding research in crop rotation and soil science. I thought you were to telecommunications! See, not here to find you at all. And my, all my subconscious tears me loud, proud, and pouty. I flush at my foolish, wayward thoughts. 
How can your subconscious be loud, proud, and pouty if he's not here to see you anyway? You'd be proud if he was here to see you. What do you mean if he's if he's not here to see you? You wouldn't be proud. You'd be kind of like, oh, okay. Cable ties. What on earth is he going to do with those cable ties? <laughs> he's going to tie you up and kill you and leave you in his basement. That's what he's going to do with those cable ties. Okay, he bends and selects a package. I hope you checked out his butt. He sounds like he's got a good butt. Even if he is a creepy serial killer. Is there anything else? I'd like some masking tape. Masking tape! <laughs> Oh my god, he's gonna kill somebody! Just call the police, Anna! Call the police! I feel like I'm 14 years old. Why does he have this effect on me? Probably because he's hot and you don't have boyfriends and it's a natural reaction to be embarrassed if somebody's he's attractive and and like hitting on Why are you so worried about what your body does? Well then again, this is a girl who can't, you know, tell the difference between whether her mouth is open or shut. I'll take that one, Gray says, pointing to the wider tape, which I pass to him. Our fingers brush very briefly and the current is there again. I grasp involuntarily as I feel it, all the way down to somewhere dark and unexplored deep in my belly. Ow! Anything else? My voice is husky and breathy. His eyes widen slightly. Some rope, I think. Oh guys, why are you always gonna hang somebody? I managed not to remove a finger with my knife. Congratulations! I'm surprised he even gave you a Stanley knife or knowing how clumsy you are. You'd probably be holding it in your hand, sure and impale yourself. I gaze at him unable to express myself. I'm on shifting tectonic plates. My tortured subconscious begs on bended knee. <laughs> You're poor subconscious. Books, I whisper, but inside my subconscious is screaming, You! You are my thing! I'm glad you're attracted to serial killers, or possible murderers. The classics. British literature, mainly. Yeah, cause you're a freaking self-insert of, like, basically every quiet, introverted teenage girl in the entire universe. I feel my color in the cheeks rising again. I must be the color of the Communist Manifesto. Do you mean that your face is turning red? I'll take some coveralls. Heaven forbid I should ruin any clothing, he says dryly. I try to dismiss the unwelcome image of him without jeans. I don't know. Unwelcome. This one's going to be pretty welcome to you because, you know, you think he's hot. Wait, how's the article coming along? I'm not writing it. Catherine is. Miss Cavanaugh. Her only concern is that she doesn't have any original ported photographs of you. I dismiss the thought of all the silly, ridiculous... Can't we be delighted if we can find a photographer? Oh, Jose. Jose! I'm calling it again. Jose. I haven't even turned to the next page. Uh, Ten bucks is going to be Jose. His lips part like he's taking a sharp intake of breath and he blinks. For a fraction of a second, he looks lost and the earth shifts slightly on its axis. The tectonic plates sliding into a new pos position. Wait, what? He looked lost and the whole earth shifted. <laughs> hey, Anna! Or, excuse me for a moment, Mr. Gray. Paul. Paul. I know I heard- I know that was a character in Twilight. I know it was! He releases me but keeps a possessive arm draped over my shoulder. It's good to see Paul, but he's always been over-familiar. The atmosphere is suddenly arctic. Paul, this is Christian Grey. Mr. Grey, this is Paul Clayton. His brother owns the place. I think Mr. Grey has the hots for Anna. He's just getting really creepy and jealous even though they've only known each other for like a week. The rope coveralls, masking tape, and cable ties. That'll be $43, please. What do you mean it'll be $43? I work as a cashier and rarely does a transaction ever come out to like an even amount of money. It does happen. I'm not saying it doesn't, but you can say like $43.87 because that would be like more accurate. It's unnerving. Would you like a bag? Please, Anastasia. His tongue caresses my name and my heart once again is frantic. Here's her name and his tongue caresses it. Uh, this is this is not good. Miles starts with a new purpose out of the store, slinging the plastic bag over his shoulder, leaving me a quivering mass of raging female hormones. Okay, I like him. There, I've admitted it to myself. I cannot hide from my feelings anymore. Oh, are you freaking serious right now? You like him. You've admitted that you like him. You've been dreaming about this guy for a week. You get all butterflies in your tummy every time you're around him. I'm pretty sure you like him. If I find the photographer, I could do some serious admiring to You haven't even mentioned Jose. I know it's gonna be Jose. Look at me. Do you see my face? I know it's gonna be Jose. You can't fool me. Chapter three, it's gonna be Jose. I bite my lip in anticipation and find myself grinning like a schoolgirl. I need to phone Kate and organize a photo shoot. And that's the end of chapter two. I'm so glad that's done. No, it's not done. It's not done because there are two more books and I'm gonna need to be really drunk or something before I can get through this. Those are my predictions for chapter three, all right? She's gonna, she's gonna say, Jose, come do a photo shoot with me. Jose's gonna be like, okay, cool. And then at the photo shoot, Christian Grey and Jose are gonna have like an ink stare down. And then eventually like, Christian Grey's gonna be like, oh, Anastasia, I like you too. Every character corresponds with the character in Twilight. You cannot tell me. This woman is so lazy, E.L. James. 
you are the laziest writer in the history of ever, and this book outsold Harry Potter. I don't want to. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. 